imperfections from District 9 well, relive the movie through new perspective and fight for control and resources. This is District 9 the board game. What is it about? In this video, we'll show you a preview of this game and stay tuned till the end so you can get a feel of it. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant and Stella from People University. We bring you a variety of quality board game videos. In this video, we're going to show you a Kickstarter preview for District 9 The Board Game, a game from Chris Cervantes, Adam Poirier and Rob Soddard and published by Weta Workshop. Let's get to the table. To be released in 2019 via Kickstarter, District 9 The Board Game is a miniatures skirmish and pick up and deliver game set in the world of Neil Blomkamp's 2009 science fiction film District 9. The game was designed by Chris Cervantes, Adam Poirier and Rob Stardot of Trishula Entertainment and published by Weta Workshop. The game plays 2-4 players competitively in 90-180 to 180 minutes and is of medium complexity. In this video we're showing you a prototype copy of the game so the art, rules and components may not be final. The year is 2010 in an alternative version of South Africa. 28 years after the arrival of the alien mothership above Johannesburg. The aliens on the ship have been segregated into the slum-like District 9. The aliens, known by the humans as Prawn, carry on their repressed existences with occasional outbursts of resistance and uprising, while groups of opportunistic humans and prawns seek out the advanced technology that they've brought with them to Earth. This is your goal in the game of District 9. You will be driving around District 9, collecting technology, and then returning it back to your base in order to earn victory points. And the player who collects the highest total value of alien tech during the game will be the winner. The story of the District 9 film will play out in the background of the game, serving as a timing mechanic, and the end of the game is triggered by the climactic events of the film. After a setup in which players take turns assembling the modular board, each player will control a faction of humans or prawn, represented primarily by a vehicle on the board. Players will also hold a hand of five cards from a personal deck, and will have up to eight deployable allies which they can deploy during the game. Finally, they will have one starting boost card, chosen from a deck unique to their faction. Factions are slightly asymmetrical through differences in their starting boosts, and also in their interactions with the game's neutral characters. On each turn, a player takes all of the following actions. One free onboard action, called an order, for each deployed ally. Three additional orders, distributed however the player wishes, among the vehicle and allies. Playing cards on their coloured side in order to boost the player's vehicle with either crew or equipment. Or playing cards on their black side, discarding it to take the action that's printed there. Equipping the vehicle costs influence, and the amount of influence that a player has to spend in each round depends on the cards already equipped to the vehicle. Playing an action attracts the attention of prawns, and that number of prawn minis is added to the player's current location. There are five basic orders in the game. Move, Evict, Claim, Bank and Engage. To move, a player moves a unit up to as many zones as its move statistic. Although leaving a zone containing more prawn than the unit's defence will result in the prawn fighting you on the way out. Evict and claim are the two ways players can gain alien tech. Evicting to claim a face down tile, or claiming to take a face up one. In each case the player must control the zone by having the most combined strength there. So here the blue truck would need to have at least four strength to control this zone and take the tile. Then, upon taking the tile, you'll add a number of prawn equal to the tech tile's points value. In the case of the evict action, those prawn may immediately engage you in combat. Banking allows the player to drop off alien tech tiles either at their bases or at their outpost. Tech tiles are at risk of being lost while they remain on the vehicles, but banking makes them safe for the rest of the game and secures those victory points. The fifth action in the game is to engage, and this is the skirmish element of the game. 
players can engage with each other, with the game's neutral characters, or with groups of prawn. When engaging in conflict, the attacker's strength is compared with the defender's defense, and each unit adds to that value by flipping one card from its deck and looking at the influence value. Neutral enemies use the Vickers deck. If the attacker wins, the defender suffers damage, and if either side flips a critical icon represented by this red flash, then the opponent suffers one critical damage. This way, the most damage a defender can suffer is two, and the most damage an attacker can suffer is one. When players suffer damage, they lose equipped cards or alien tech at random, and so this incentivizes players to bank their tech when they can. Prawn or deployable allies are removed from the board when damaged, and the game's neutral characters lose a district boost card when damaged until they've run out. District boost cards are powerful upgrade cards with a victory point value which are attached to the victor's vehicle. Players may have no more than one at a time and these would replace the starting boost card. In this way you can see the essence of the game. Players aim to drive out to the alien tech tiles, assemble the highest strength in the area, claim the tiles which attracts more prawn, and return to a base or outpost to bank those tiles for points. They need to bolster their vehicles with equipment and allies, both to control the zones they're looting and to mitigate the conflicts they'll face on their way back to the base. Since they risk losing their tech and the points that come with it if they lose in combat. Players also collectively need to manage unrest among the prawn, since evicting prawn or engaging them in conflict will make them angrier, causing unrest and eventually ending in riot, making the prawn more dangerous and difficult to defeat. The game is timed by the story of the District 9 film, and this occurs by each player drawing and resolving an event card after each turn, and by two Vicus cards being resolved at the end of each round of play. These cards are resolved by the player who draws them, and so they can freely use them in a tactical way to disadvantage their opponents, rather than following the District 9 plot to a letter. The game is delineated into three days of play. In day one, Vicus, the mild-mannered MNU administrator, is walking around looking for alien tech. Events in this phase generally revolve around revealing or manipulating tech tiles, or adding small numbers of prawn to the board. Day one ends when Vicus finds the canister tile. This is the key moment in the film when he's sprayed with a liquid which starts to turn him into an alien. Day 2 introduces three new characters to the game. The Prawn, Christopher or CJ, the Mercenary, Kubus Venta, and the Gangster, Obasanjo. Characters from the film who rally Prawn, attack players with strength 2 or 3 attacks, or steal tech tiles. Day 2 will end when Vicus and Christopher reach the same zone. This is the moment in the film where the alien dropship and mech suit are activated. In day three, the dropship now covers the center of the board and Vicus enters the mech suit. Events now focus on strength four to six battles from the mech suit as well as the helicopter. Through day three, when players damage the mech suit, it will drop alien tech tiles onto the board. As it loses tech, it will become increasingly weaker in defense and easier to defeat. And so the end of the game becomes a rush to defeat the mech and then collect the pieces of tech which drop off it, as well as banking it before the mech or other players fight back. Once the mech is destroyed, the moment in the film when Christopher returns to the dropship and escapes, the game is over. Players have one more chance to claim tech tiles from zones they control, and the player holding the highest value of alien tech wins the game. And that's the overview of District 9 the board game. We hope that you enjoyed the video, and we hope that it helps you. At the time of filming, District 9 the board game is about to be launched on Kickstarter, so we'll put a link in the description below when it's live, so you can check that out if you're keen. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by hitting the like button, write your questions or feedback in the comment sections below. You can also join our Facebook group, Maple University Community, to share your love of board games. And finally, if you'd like to be among the first ones notified of our new videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. You can click on the Meeple up in the corner to do so, and do hit the bell to be notified of our new videos. Until next time!